What do you get when you cross a know-it-all newspaper columnist with an awkward, unsophisticated everyman? Yeah, uh, well, I'm just not sure about that right now. Welcome to Couch and the Room. Welcome to Couch in the Rue, presented by Pure Options Precision Crafted Cannabis. Pure Options is having a 420 Lansing block party with Sean Kingston, Desmond Jones, DJs, and more. Uh, it's a consumption event with live games, food trucks, a lot of stuff going on. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Pure Options parking lot and location in Frandor. On, of course, 420. That would be Saturday, 420. So if you're thinking about the MSU spring football game before or after, make your way over to Pure Options in Frandor and uh, get a little other incredible deals going on starting that week through 420. We'll get into more of those later. Also, our Thursday afternoon show brought to you by our friends at Front 43 Neighborhood Pub and Cask and Company Kitchen and Bar. That's just north of Frandor on... Um, West Sag East Saginaw in Lansing. Incredible happy hour deals is always something to take advantage of. Great Wednesday uh, martini deals. Uh, it, I'm telling you, if you haven't done Front 43 and Casking Company, and if you're a listener, I'd be surprised if you're in the area. It is worth your time uh, to enjoy the uh, the beer selection, the um, incredible menu, and uh, the two sort of really cool different vibes, the pub vibe and the restaurant vibe, both with great television setups at Front 43 Neighborhood Pub and Cask and Company Kitchen and Bar. Jason, how you doing, brother? Big 10 plus is ass. What's up, buddy? Haven't seen you in a while. It's, it's good to have you back. Yeah. It's great to be back on the podcast. <laughs> I know you guys did one without me. I'm sure it was a great podcast. It was quite Thanks a bit better Thanks to Rob Bennett usual. for coming in here and dealing with your shit. Yep, it was a lot better than that. I haven't that. listened to one second of it. People are like, didn't you listen? Did you want to listen? I'm like, I don't know. I feel like they had it covered. I'm on the show. I don't need to listen to it. He do doesn't I? get to use the F word during Ebling show. Did so he swear? right away, I had him drop an F bomb just so he could feel good and, 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 and relax. MFers now? Yeah, and <laughs> that's a good tone setter for this podcast, though. I Someone's going to so. fill in. Yes, they have to swear within the first twelve seconds. It's just yeah, you just feel comfortable. You feel different. You're you're uh, yeah. Anyway, it was like when Howard Stern went to Sirius, and I listened to 2004, and he was going in 05, and I'm like. Oh, man, it's going to be so wild to hear Howard swear, like, on the air. And then he did, and it was like, oh, okay. I guess we can swear. And then, it's not, yeah, it's just not such a big deal. <laughs> and then you can do it too much. We've done it too much occasionally on this show, and I try to try to tone it down here and there. Ah, um, I think talking this, like normal people. I think this is going to be a fun show today. Hell uh, yeah, it is. The breaking news, right? Well, there's a lot. get the music ready for how happy we are? There's Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. All right, well. At least you. Go ahead, Graham. Tell him the news. Mati Sissoko has entered the transfer portal. Why? Why does that make me happy? Oh, I don't know. Okay, good. I just want to. I'm not happy. Mati Sissoko is, of course, leaving not. Michigan State. Of course not. Yeah, I, I. He's a great guy. I'd gotten wind that this was probably in the works, and um, no shit. Yeah. And, well, I thought it was going the other way for a long time. I thought based I on scared. based on the tone at the end of the season, I thought he was more likely to stay than go, and somebody else would likely leave. As I sort of get the vibe and feeling now, much more likely, obviously, Mati Sissoko has decided to go, and I think this is pretty firm. I, I think they they didn't necessarily want him to leave. This is something he wanted to do. He just wanted a fresh start, wanted somewhere else to be, and and I don't I don't entirely blame him. Um, I I do think that Jackson Kohler is more likely to stick around, not because so much of Sissoko, but I just think that's the way that's leaning. I think he and Izzo have, have, have had some good chats and a good rapport, and um, he still likes his potential opportunity at Michigan State, and he likes being a part of the program, and he, and he, he thinks his weaknesses sometimes as a player are what Izzo's strengths have been historically. But, yeah, the big news is when, when you lose Mati Sissoko, 
which is it, <laughs> I, a I, big loss. I, I want to be careful here, yeah, because I, I do think that this was I, I I think a big part of last year's problem was that the coaching staff was slow to realize that Sissoko's role needed to, to diminish, and a couple of reasons for that. One, we saw how Sissoko responded to that when it finally happened, like how. Yeah! He played his best games at the end of the season, in the postseason, after he'd been benched and when he was needed. And if that version of Sissoko had showed up all year, he wouldn't have been a Big Ten caliber starting center, an upper tier Big Ten caliber starting center, but he would have been a much more useful player. And I think people would have thought differently of his entire season. And I think that player could still be a useful player at a high major uh, in, in a limited role. It won't be at Michigan State. I think that's probably better for Michigan State. As we talk about the need to turn a page on a team and a roster, I think Sissoko leaving – is kind of part of that. Right, and that's why it drove me crazy when you were kind of insinuating, because when you do that, I'm like, man, what does he know? Maybe he knows Sissoko's coming back, because was, that was what my thinking, is like we just got to shed some things from this, this season and be able to move on to next season. And unfortunately, it's a really great guy that does great things off the court. What I, I, think, there's also, I think there's also this challenge. With, I, I don't think people trust Izzo with Sissoko. So I think if, if you had me as your head coach, and I don't mean to coach Izzo's team here, and, and um, you know, don't but coach my team. I, Cockburn. <laughs> I could go in. I could assure you that I was going to go into a season and use him appropriately, and use him where needed, and you would get the most out of him, and he would be a valuable member of the team. But he wouldn't be overused. I don't think anybody trusts that he won't be overused, <laughs> and I well, think that's part of the problem. If he goes to Western. Uh, well, no, I'm talking about if he was at Michigan State, oh. and so I think people don't trust that that he would actually have a, a more limited role. And um, and I also think that, and I don't know what uh, the extent of every conversation that was had with him, because I do think they they w- were happy to keep him. Um, <laughs> but I just don't believe that. If you, I think if if you look at like Kohler versus Sissoko in terms of a trade-off. And I'm not saying one would have been a reaction to the other. I, but you would much rather have the upside of, of Kohler that we really haven't gotten to see yet because of the injury and see where that's going to go and, and have him play another year at least in the program and see if you can get some of the stuff they thought they were going to get coming into the season before the injury. You'd, I mean, you'd 100% rather take that trade-off. Over, Espe- over Sissoko? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I might take you at this point well, over Sissoko. I get it. You know, it's like yeah. – are we really going to miss this guy? I don't think so. Is he a great person? Yeah, we just have to preface everything with by saying that first. Matt Shepard Hall of Fame. Yes, absolutely. First ballot Hall of Famer. So he has that going for him. Right. And and hopefully, you know, for him, he goes somewhere else and, and um, you know, has the best final season of college basketball he can have. And then, you know, he's got, because of where he's from and Molly, his professional opportunities are going to be greater than they would be if he was an American. He'll be able to make money doing that for a long time. He'll have some value. Uh, he, he'll be he'll be fine in life. Well, and, let me let me ask you a question. Let's say Madi transfers to Western, averages fifteen and ten. Are you kind of like, hey, what's going on? No. Or has the game passed Tom Izzo by? So I think that's what Sissoko should do. I think Sissoko is going to more likely go to a bigger school. I for, I do under from what I understand, he has some decent offers, a high major offers. And people who are interested in him. And by the way, people don't wait till you're in the portal to call and give you offers. They don't? <laughs> you, <laughs> That's not right. Like, Sissoko just went into the portal today. My understanding is the paperwork wasn't done at least last night at the very earliest. And he was aware of high major offers. So the whole system is kind of But when that's bullshit. problem, 79 of 1,000, it's kind it's of hard not, to even not really, look at that. You know? Not really a problem. It's not really a problem. Anyway, it, it does sort of unclog the center position a little bit, give some clarity to the guys if they are back, who that would be. Um, I still think... Oh, sorry. I still think there's... We're not, ex- we're not celebrating. No. It's not a celebration. It's not a celebration. Okay. I still think it's, it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do at the four and five, whether, you know, they get a four... I, I still think they need to get somebody who can help them rebound. I don't really think it matters all that much if it's a true five, if it's a true four. You need a guy who's kind of a rugged rebounder in there who can can be added to the mix, who can help defend the five, and then you figure out, you know, what lineups you're going to do, how often you're going to use Carson Cooper out, what you're going to do with uh, Xavier Booker at the five at times. Uh, I still think that pairing with him and Kohler could be interesting. We'll see. Uh, and then I think you, you, go, you need to get even more than a five. I think you need to get a sizable 
uh, versatile wing. I think that's almost more important than a five. Now, I think they need to get somebody who, again, can help them rebound. But when you look at the roster and you look at the, the youth at the four position, you look at the idea of playing Jaden Akins at the two, and you start thinking about what Cohen Carr is and it, it, he still has to improve into is only a sophomore. Like, going to get somebody who's a little bit more ready-made who's got some size to them on the wing I think is probably the most critical thing for this roster to have a chance to be because while while they need to do something inside still you you know Xavier Booker could take massive steps Carson Cooper could take massive steps you could wind up having some really good players already in the fold there at the wing spot you're undersized there's no way around it. There's no way. About it. I mean, you've got you've got to do something there. So we'll see what happens um, in the coming days and weeks. And if anybody else leaves in the portal, there's the portal lasts for like 726 well, by, days at this point. By so. the way, before we get to Harry, though, Montgomery going to U of D in the past couple of days. I just saw that. Now, at face value, I read that, and I'm like, why is he being punished? Like, is that a good job mm-hmm. for Montgomery to go to he U of D? He wanted to go run his own thing. I think it was – I think he was somebody who – will be happier doing that than he was in his So he wasn't situation. happy at Michigan State? I'm not, I, you know, I didn't talk to him about that. I just, I think, it, I think it could be very difficult to go from running your own shop for a decade to working for, but for you Izzo. But <laughs> running U of D, the U of D job, like this sensational stepping stone. Like, he's, I don't know, well, I just I feel like he, I, Mark Montgomery's age, I just feel like that's a shit job for him. Well, it's a tough job. But I don't, right, but, but I mean, if you want your own thing, I don't know if that's where you go. I don't think but. he was going to get a better opportunity, right? And I think it's a chance in state. It's a you know he's from that area of the state. He's he'll be able to build a staff and take a swing at it. And you're coming off they were so horrible, you know. It's it, you're not like you're following a legend there, and you're gonna you're gonna you got to win right that away. That is true. It is good to it's, follow it's, that awful calamity that was U of D basketball. But yeah. No, it, I just was like, man, is, is a shoved him down to U of D? Is that a punishment? But. No, I, no. This was something. That, look, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for for Mark, and he gets to run his own show. And it'll, it'll be interesting to see what MSU does now, and uh, whether they they go outside, whether they promote internally, um, and, and and what that means, and and what it means for the the big man position right now. You have Wojcik coaching the bigs. Does he slide to a different Boo. role? I mean, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so we'll we'll see where they where they go with that. Um, I, I'm sure Izzo has an idea right now, um, but I. You could still, even if you hire internally for that position, you could still hire somebody else on your staff, which could create some opportunities for, you know, a, a, a new voice or a good big man developer or whatever it is. There's opportunities because you have an opening on the staff. Uh, we'll see where they where they go with that. Um, we'll take a really quick break, and then we'll come back. We're going to talk with Harry. We're going to pick our final four games, get his best bets for the weekend, our best bets, and then. Um, We'll come back and we'll talk some other things. Maybe get a little bit back in MSU, an MSU hockey development that could be interesting and some other stuff in college athletics. Uh, Couch in the Rube presented by Pure Options, Precision Crafted Cannabis, and, uh, of course, our Thursday show by our friends at Front 43 Neighborhood Pub and Cask and Company Kitchen and Bar. Hey, sports fans. Are you tired of the same old routine? Looking for a way to unwind after a long day? Look no further than Pure Options, the premier destination for all of your cannabis needs in Lansing, Detroit, Muskegon, and Mount Pleasant. Whether you're cheering for the Lions, Spartans, or the Wolverines, Pure Options has everything you need to elevate your game day experience. And here's the best part. Mention Couch in the Rube when you visit Pure Options and get a free GoPro 8 with a $50 purchase. It's our way of saying thank you for being a loyal listener. Swing by Pure Options today and elevate your cannabis experience to a whole new level. Firekeepers Online Casino and Sportsbook is the site to play from your phone, tablet, or laptop. Get in on all the football action with pre- and in-game wagering. There's showdowns every week in football that you can't miss. Plus, the college and pro hoops are red hot and the pucks are cool. Get your first casino deposit and sports wager matched up to $500 each. Terms and conditions apply. Must be 21 or older and located in Michigan. Gambling problem? Call the Michigan Problem Gambling Helpline at 1-800-270-7117. Where else can you cheer on your team, enjoy a mouth-watering burger or savory sushi? 
sip on handcrafted cocktails, or one of 46 beers on tap. Take your game day or date night to Cask and Company Kitchen, Bar, or Front 43 Neighborhood Pub near Frandor. Two amazing places with one awesome blended modern American Asian menu. Catch the game on one of 30 60 inch TVs or stop in for the all you can eat lunch buffet. Enjoy happy hour or elevate your night out at Cask and Company or Front 43 on East Saginaw in Lansing. Find Couch in the Room podcasts on Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Google Podcasts, CastBox, and the Rube's favorite podcast addict. Couch in the Rube, presented by our friends at Pure Options Cannabis, and our Thursday afternoon show brought to you by Front 43 Neighborhood Pub in Cask and Company Kitchen and Bar near the Lansing East Lansing border on East Saginaw. Very pleased now to be joined by the great Harry Gagnon from The Ringer, from Against All Odds with Cousin Sal, who is uh, just off a plane. He, I think he's in a closet in an airport hiding from TSA somewhere. Harry, how are you? What's up, guys? How's everything? <laughs> yep, just landed. I uh, appreciate you uh, making some time for us. Where, where, where did you land, by the way? What city are you in? Uh, I'm in L.A. Uh, Springsteen, another concert tonight. I'm meeting, we're meeting, uh, me and my pal are meeting uh, some good buddies uh, uh, that were uh, that uh, live here in L.A., so we're going to have a good time tonight. Well, bring a folding chair for yourself because you're going to need one if you're on the floor again. Don't want oh, Harry standing I'll, for three hours. I'll tell you what, the last, the last couple of concerts have been great because I've been up against a railing, and, uh, and um the bailing really works. It really helps out for three hours. So that's where I'm. Once I get into the pit, I'm going right to a, one of the railings, either the left side or right side. But I'm hitting the railing. Just imagine being excited about a railing. No, nah, man, this railing's great. Just right up my back. Just leaning right on the railing. Yeah. These tickets are like two grand. Like, get them a yeah. seat. <laughs> well, you have quite the life, Harry. Uh, I got to yeah. say. Uh, um, Springsteen tonight in LA. Doesn't suck. Doesn't suck at all. Um, all right, we, let's. Uh, we want to get into our final four picks, uh, but there are a couple things. Uh, there, there, there's a game you like tonight that I think is is worth getting into first. You like the Knicks minus three and a half. So for people are listening before Thursday evening, mm-hmm. Knicks minus three and a half. Explain. Yeah, I, you know, I know. The Knicks are on a little bit of a losing streak. They lost three in a row, um, but I think they snapped that tonight. I'm going to lay the three and a half as I play Sacramento. Uh, New York three weeks ago won a defensive struggle in Sacramento by a score of 98-91, and they held the Kings to just 35% shooting in that game. This is New York's only home game, guys, in a six-team span, and are fighting for that three seed in the East, as you know, with Cleveland and some others. So New York has had the Kings number at the Garden of late. In the last three games between these two with Madison Square Garden, the Knicks have won by 13, 20, and 19. Again, only home game in the six-game span. they got to have this one. Give me the next minus three and a half against Sacramento. Uh, that's uh, that's beautiful. The, the, I tell you what, though, the Knicks are so battered right now. It's a shame what's happened to their season. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's not what uh, what I was what I was hoping they would uh, what they looked like they were going to be. All right, so let's let's turn to these these final four games. Um, I I think there's some great opportunities with favorite parlays in both the men and the women, and and you do too. So I want to I want to start there. You go UConn men. Now, you like a money line parlay with Iowa women, South Carolina women, UConn men. So UConn men, Iowa women, yep. South Carolina women, plus 105. I like something else. I like UConn men, Purdue men, South Carolina women, and then you throw in like Man City uh, at Crystal Palace as your fourth team to get it down near at, at, at even money. That would be my, 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 my play. But explain why you like this parlay so much. Yeah, that three teamer, like you mentioned, I like South Carolina money line, Iowa money line, women's, UConn men, pays plus 105 for those three teams just to win the game straight up. Obviously, you can, UConn men are a machine. Uh, Ten straight double digit tournament wins for UConn. I don't see them getting stopped here at all. Um, uh, Alabama, if they can't make their threes, it's going to be a long night for them. And I think maybe they're just happy to finally get to a Final Four. Uh, so uh, UConn's on a mission. So give me the UConn men, and then in the women, uh, South Carolina money line. Dawn Staley, South Carolina squad is undefeated with basically a brand new starting five from last year. Um, they're four and over to the ACC. They get North Carolina State, and in those four games, they won by almost 140 points versus ACC foes. 
So give me South Carolina and move on. And I'm taking, of course, Iowa money line. Um, great run right now by the UConn women, but Caitlin Clark can't be stopped, won't be denied. Iowa versus South Carolina will be the women's final on Sunday night. Will be fantastic to watch. So give me South Carolina, Iowa, and UConn men all to win. See, the only problem I have with that, guys, is I, th- I think UConn beats Caitlin Clark in Iowa. I, I think because she spent so yeah. much energy on that LSU game. UConn, Paige Beckers is one of my favorite players to watch, men or women's side. I know everybody loves Caitlin Clark, but I, st- I still like Gino Ariema and Paige Beckers over Iowa. They're playing with like five people, but uh, um, it's all you need sometimes. That is, that, that can be all. Don't, don't tell. I will, say this, I will say this, guys. I do like the over 162 and a half on that game you just mentioned, Jay, uh, between uh, Iowa and UConn. Nine of Iowa's last ten games, they scored 89 points or more. They met uh, last year, game went over 162. And you mentioned Becker, she is fantastic. Been a force in this tournament. She's got three double doubles in four games. But again, I think Iowa pulls this out. Ratings, guys, ratings. South Carolina, Iowa. But I do like the over at 162 and a half. All right, let's let's go through these uh, the, the 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 two men's games too in terms of what we like and 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 uh, um, I uh, it's a 12 points is a lot even for Connecticut over Alabama and the way they've been playing. But I'm not, I'm not picking against Connecticut right now. So I, I, this, this is too much for me to take uh, directly. But, Jason, where are you on that game? I just think I want the point. I mean, that just seems like a lot of points. I, I know that UConn is, is outmatched uh, when they're playing Alabama. But, man, give me those 12. What do you like, Harry? You know what? I, yeah, I'm, UConn is amazing. But I'm not going to lay these points. I'm not going to lay the points like this in a – uh, final four contest. What I'm going to do is go the over. I'm going to go over 160 and a half. Bama was the highest scoring team in America at over 90 points per game. The Tide has scored 89 or more in three of their four tourney games so far. They scored 89 or more 20 times this season. And UConn is so balanced, so efficient. Newton, Spencer, and Klingon have been the Huskies leading scores in the last three games. At any given point, it could be any of five guys that could lead Connecticut in scoring. I think Bama pushes the tempo. Something I think UConn is just fine with. Uh, a lot of points in this game. I got UConn 92. I've got Alabama 80 over 160 and a half. Mm, okay. Uh, the other game, NC State Purdue. Um, again, too many points for me. Right here, uh, I, I like Purdue on the money line again, throwing them into things. I think Purdue's going to win this game. I think they're the better team. I, I don't trust them entirely to cover the nine. Uh, I don't. I don't. I frankly, wouldn't be on that either. But um, Jason, do you have a, a, a play here? I just think we're our brains are warped by Big Ten basketball. I think NC State, great story. How many games in a row they won? Burns and all that stuff. But I think it comes to an end. I know nine and a half sounds pretty heavy, but you can maybe get it at eight and a half. Some books. I really like Purdue at, at minus eight and a half. I just think they're a, a dominant, better team than NC State, and it finally comes to an end. In the, and the that's usually what we see, right? The Cinderella in Final Four ends up getting blown out. So, give me Purdue, Harry. What do you got? I hear you, Jay. But I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride with Graham here. Um, I'm gonna take the nine and a half. Um, you know, I jumped on NC State against Duke, and I figured to myself, wow, watch. I jump on. I I can't stand Duke. And if they, if they win, it's going to kind of suck for the Final Four, being in Phoenix and all. Um, and I jumped on NC State with the points. And at halftime, it didn't look good in that game against Duke. I mean, uh, NC State had, what, 21 points at halftime. And then they just erupted. They just, you know, they just went nuts in the second half, held Duke down, took them down. I could, I, you know, I, I, was, I figured, okay, I jump on NC State now, and I'm going to watch, watch. I'm going to get smoked with this. Didn't happen. I'm going to take the nine and a half in a Final Four game. DJ Horn and Burns are playing out of their minds for the Wolfpack. Maybe Burns can use his body, push Edie out a bit more than he's accustomed to in the paint. Um, over this nine-game streak that NC State has had, they've been scoring plenty. Eight of the nine games, they scored 73 points or more. Makes me like the plus nine and a half even more. I'm going to take the nine and a half for the Wolfpack. See, I could agree with you guys if I knew how the refs were going to call this game with Edie. It's just it's well, just been crazy during the tournament, Harry, where he doesn't even have a foul like all game long or has one. It's I, just wild. Well, that's the thing, guys. I made a big stink on against a lot this week, and the guys, of course, of course, especially Parley Kid and Sal were against me. But that game against Tennessee, I've never seen anything like it. 
I mean, basically, uh, Painter's game plan was, guys, don't shoot. Nobody shoot. Just every single time down the court, just dump it down to Edie, and we'll, we'll let him do whatever he needs to do to get us points. I mean, he didn't get called for a foul. Again, he had he got called for one foul. He didn't get called for a foul until nine minutes left in the second half. I mean, Tennessee's got four or five guys rotating in and out trying to do what they can against this guy. He's pushing guys out of the way for rebounds. There's, there's no three-second calls in basketball anymore, which he's camping out in. And he traveled a few times, and they never called anything against him. Tennessee had more bench points, 10 to nothing. They had more assists. Believe not, somehow they had more blocks. They beat them in every statistic except free throws and fouls called, and that was the difference. Six points after all that, Tennessee wins all that stuff, and Purdue still wins the game by six because Edie didn't get called for anything. You're right, Jay. The um, I yeah I I'm really rooting for Purdue, and I'm hoping that's not coloring my perception of this. That's you the other Matt problem. Matt Painter, sixty nine, and you're sixty nine. Well, I boys. just I just want I just think it's a great. It's it's time for that monkey to be off their back. It's, it's time for yeah. the Big Ten to stop getting so much. Now, I don't know that they could beat UConn, but I want to see UConn-Purdue. That's the other thing. I want to see that game, and so I'm going to root oh, for let me, let, me, let me ask you this. Okay, we see the game. Let's, now, let's, we see that game, and it plays out to be that way because, again, Purdue is a nine-and-a-half point yeah. favorite. On, mo- on Monday night, UConn dominates the game. Purdue can't get anything going from the outside, from the other players. And Connecticut wins this game by twenty twenty five. Then how do you feel? I mean, just, I'm just like I'm not I'm not slamming anybody, but I'm just saying like I know UConn's a machine, no doubt about it. And, but I don't think that happens. By 25? I don't know? think okay. I don't okay. think that happens. I, I think that I, I just think the Edie's too good. He's the most efficient player in college basketball ever. Three straight. No years. shit. When you're seven five and you get all the calls, I mean, we're acting like he's like the next he's great good. Wilt fucking Chamberlain. He's pretty good. No. Oh. He's going to get dunked on so bad in the NBA. I can't wait for it. I hope he's like the Sean Bradley where he just yeah. constant posters being done. So you you don't want you don't want the uh, you don't want the Pistons taking me was what Fuck you're saying. No. Right? No. Well, he, he he needs to go he needs to go to a good No, I think there's a great role for him in the NBA and I think guys like Jokic don't want to deal with him. You saw Jokic try and deal with Wemby in that length and it took him a minute. I think he's a great second unit big man. If you're a good team you build your second unit around him. He's a force to deal with. These other teams got to counter that. And then in the postseason, when you run into, he helps you with your size. When you do run into some of these big guys and these teams, with, with you know, when you run into the Jokic's in the world and uh, Anthony Davis, I, I I think he's a great. If you got a good team and a good culture, I think he's a great. Uh, you think he's smart unit. enough though? He's a smart enough basketball player. I do. I do. I do. I do. I think he's a little too slow. A little mm. too slow Oof. to get one before he gets his. You know, when he gets his finally gets his shot off. And turns to turns to a side and get the. I think it's just a little too slow for the NBA game to be able to pull that off. In college, sure. In the pros, I don't know. Look at the three of us telling people they're too slow. That's great. <laughs> I, Can't uh, jump worth a shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. So the other thing, Harry, I wanted to get into, but why we have you here is the NFL totals are out on some books. Uh, the, the, and and you, you're, I, you like a couple things just jumping off yeah. top of mind. And obviously, this summer we'll get in all these and do this. A, a greater extent, but just jumping on early lines, you like under Buffalo, Buffalo under ten and a half, and over seven and a half on Pittsburgh, correct? Yeah, and you know what? I liked under ten and a half on Buffalo before that trade was made for Diggs uh, yesterday. I liked under ten and a half in the first place because you guys remember they had to scrape and claw their way to the AFC East title last year, winning, having to win the last five games of the regular season just to get to eleven. Yeah, and 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 not to mention, okay, Diggs still a great player, sure, but he did have his lowest amount of yards um, for his career since 2019 last year. Now he's gone. Gabe Davis, their second leading receiver, gone. Their defense, a couple linebackers, linebackers gone. Uh, um, and Tre'Davious White and Jordan Poyer, who are Pro Bowlers when they're healthy, those two are gone. I love the Bills under 10 and a half. I can't believe it hasn't moved or anything either. You know, a lot of people are saying the Jets for the East now, maybe, maybe not. But still, I don't like the Bills at 10 and a half to have to get to 11 as they barely got there last year. Now they're down a ton of players. So give me the Bills under 10 and a half. And I like the Steelers over seven and a half. This is a team that didn't win eight last year. They didn't win nine. They won 10. They won 10 with Pickett, Rudolph, and Trubisky. Now you've got Russell Wilson 
and Justin Fields in there, I think better quarterbacks than last year. Two motivated to guys, too, to prove two something. Two motivated yep, guys. Yep. And Russell Wilson still, with a depleted offense on Denver last year, still managed to win eight games, still managed to have better stats than Patrick Mahomes. If you look at the numbers in terms of touchdowns and interceptions, uh, you need just eight here. Tomlin always seems to get at least eight. Najee Harris and the Steelers running game was great at the end of the season. You look at Najee Harris's numbers. I think he had three, the last three out of four games, he had about 110 yards rushing in those games. And again, when the dust settles and the season's over, guys, free agent pickups wise, you might see that at least defensively, maybe from Baltimore, the Steelers getting linebacker Patrick Queen might be the best free agent pickup defensively in the NFL next year. I mean, you've got, you've got, the pass rusher in Watt. You've got Queen to control the middle. The Steelers' defense is always solid. Seven and a half. You just got to get to eight when they won 10 last year, like I said, with Pickett, Rudolph, and Trubisky. Give me the Steelers to get eight. Now, I know, again, the Central, the AFC Central is, um, uh, or AFC North is very uh, loaded, no doubt about it. Cincinnati's going to be back. Um, Baltimore, obviously, uh, solid. And the Browns really stepping it up after last year. They put up a lot of wins last year. But still, just to get to eight, Tomlin always gets eight. Give me the Steelers. Yeah, I thought it was a typo when I saw it on here as, as one of your picks. It's seven and a half. Like you said, I think he could take over like Arizona and win eight games. Do you have Russ Wilson plus with that defense? I mean, it seems mm-hmm. like a, a lock. I love it. I mean, you look at the Steelers last year, guys, and we've seen this in past past years. Uh, some of these games, like when they played home against Baltimore last year, Against the Ravens, they had no business, no business winning that game, and the defense kept them in it, and they pulled that game out. They do that a lot. Every single year, they pull out a couple games like that, along with having some solid performances along the way, getting some surprises from the offense. Again, to get to eight, I think that's a steal. Harry, you're you're a beautiful man. Um, Please uh, tell the boss hello tonight. Ask if he'll play an acoustical version of Stolen Car for you. Uh, That would be be a nice uh, nice little surprise. that's all I ever want to hear when I'm uh, when I'm. Uh, that's, that's just really? one of the, one of these shows. I just want to hear. It's it's one of my, it's my favorite song. The like the gotcha. the, the, the B side acoustical version of Stolen Cards. It's, it's my favorite song he's he's ever done. Um, but uh, we appreciate you. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time. We'll uh, we'll hopefully talk real soon. Always, guys. Take care and have enjoy the games. Thanks, man. That's the great Harry Gagnon uh, from the Ringer from Against All Odds with cousin Sal uh, with his with his picks there. How how long would you last like in your current marriage let's say that you were traveling as much as harry was felt like and it wasn't like you were doing like like you're on a trip for a hard-hitting story you're just going following your rich friend around going to concert so let's take it like this so instead of covering the big 10 tournament covering the ncaa tournament for basketball and hockey the last three weeks i was just going to go yeah to have fun yeah it wouldn't go well it would it would it would uh, uh my wife would put up with a lot she clearly loves me Sure, I'm her second person to hang out, favorite person to hang out with, other than herself. That's, that's what I've been told. <laughs> which is, I mean, really a great compliment for somebody who's an introvert. Um, <laughs> she told you. That? She once told me one of the reasons she knew that we were going to work is that she actually enjoyed hanging out with me more than she just enjoyed being alone. <laughs> and there's no one else in the world that's the case. Can you say that with any significant other? I mean, that's how you pick. Yeah, other person you want to be with it. I also know she's lying because I've seen her with a couple friends of hers where she just has an absolute blast, way more fun than she ever has with me. <laughs> and so that's well, yeah, but turn it on like if you're watching a, a game at the house and you and your buddy are sitting there slapping ass about it, you know. I mean, it's just a different whatever. You can't be that bummed about it. No, no, she, and, and yeah, she's she's not your best friend or anything. Well, she's, like she's, most guys say. Well, she's yeah. My wife is my best friend. For the record, she Shut is. Shut up. She what is, is Therese oh. not your best friend? No, absolutely not. Does she she's know not this? my best friend? I love her I, as a wife. She is great to be around. I love being around her, but she's not my best friend. I would not rob a bank with her. She'd tell on me as soon as I one foot stepped out of that fucking door. She would tell on me in no time. That's why a best friend, like my Michigan fan friend Jordan, I know if I robbed a bank, he would tell a lie for me to get away. Now that's a best friend. A wife is someone that'll tell on you when you do something stupid. What? <laughs> would he do it if it meant Michigan would win another football national championship? You could take anything you want and put it in front of it. I think he would still – I mean, there's going to be a – you know, 
if I'm on the run or something, he'll probably not sit there and keep helping me, I would think. But, I mean, that's a real friend, though. Have you and him had these discussions? Absolutely not. I mean, it's just how I feel personally. I just hear a lot of guys say that their wife is their best friend. I just find it wild. I find I would I would like to know from our listeners how many different Well, wives I'm sure are. it'll be, you know, people that like you, they're going to vote for my wife is my best friend. People that like me are indifferent. I think they'll yeah. My but wife is not my best friend. I mean, it doesn't mean I hate my you you make it you turn it into like I hate my wife. No, I love getting to hang out with my wife in certain cases, but if you're going to say it's your best friend, Come on. I don't know. We just throw that best friend title. No, it's fair. Loosely. No, because like Scott Powers. Uh, yeah. My buddy covers the Blackhawks for the Athletic. Best yeah. man at my wedding. Um, he, I talk to him. There Very few days go by that we don't spend 15 minutes on the phone together. Yeah, that's wild to me. And like I, if my wife and I are, it was interesting. I could tell she actually missed me when I was on the road for a while because she started FaceTiming me and we'd have like 15, 10 minute, 15 minute conversations. <laughs> But the first week when I was away just for the Big Ten tournament, yeah. I don't know that she called. Hey, yeah. You know, I was. <laughs> My wife, she travels for work and stuff, and we don't really talk. You know, we text throughout the day, and maybe she might give me a call when she's at the hotel late at night. But I mean, when she's with I her other family. <laughs> but I don't like being on the phone. You know, I just feel like it's a waste of time. Yeah. Because you usually just sit on the phone, and you're like, hey, all right, I guess I'll, uh, you know, you're just trying to get stuff going. But anyway, well, those are stories almost worth telling presented by our friends at Midtown Brewing Company in downtown Lansing. What also is uh, presented by Midtown Brewing Company in downtown Lansing is our 2024, uh, 2004, like I don't know what year it is. Great year, 2004. Uh, it was a good year. I wish I was 24 again. Uh, 2024 Couch in the Rube uh, NCAA Tournament Men's and Women's Bracket Challenges. My wife is no longer in the lead with the men. Uh, Darren Stem has the lead with UConn. Tyler Sigman is in second place with Purdue to win it. So my guess is those two are the most likely. Uh, Cody Bennett in third with UConn. uh, Ricky Lombardi second bracket in fourth with Purdue. Are those Um, usernames? Because I need like Fart Soup and There's some people. Richard Boner. Well, you though though are in really good shape in the women's bracket. I know. I know women's ball, man. your Your knowledge of women's basketball is... Listen, I will say this. I had a great time watching these games, and I can't wait for tomorrow to watch the games too. I just don't know why it has to be such a crazy deal because you don't like women's sports when it's boring, but when it's exciting, yay, we like women's sports. I just think it's it goes for anything in life. As long as there's players we like to watch and there's crazy things happening, we like to watch it. But people want to turn it like you're misogynistic or sexist if you don't catch every women's game. So, well, in our I hope there's a lot of women that are going to be watching those games tomorrow. And I was telling my wife, I'm like, are you going to watch the games tomorrow? She doesn't care. Right. Well, you got to support the women. Well, no, I think you, I think what's great is it's not about supporting them. It's about, I mean, their, their ratings are, it's about the drama. I mean, it's great theater at this point. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is, um, it is no longer something that's like, oh, hey, we should check this out. Hey, it's not so bad. Like it, like I thought for a long time, I really did. I thought for a long time that. With women's sports, we picked the wrong sport to promote heavily and get into. I I thought women's volleyball would have been the better counter to men's basketball. It was exciting. It was sort of above the rim, above the net, so to speak. Like I thought that was a more fun sport to to watch, generally with many matchups. But it's just I mean the game has changed. The women's game is not only much better in terms of the the athleticism and the quality of play, but it's it's become really compelling theater, right? with the coaches and the stars and it's there are some transfers but the highest level the stars seem to stick but they it's play the multiple athleticism years. it's yeah, the athleticism totally. that it's it changed it, it's like juju watkins for usc i'm watching her and you do see glimpses totally of carmelo anthony yep. right you see caitlin clark you see steph curry Paige beckers you see different like there's an all-around game that was in the men's game and there was it was really hard to find in the women's game it's there it, now it, yeah. yeah so it's it, it even you know i watched the michigan state women who are were just a a, a good team this year, not a great team yet, but the style in which they played this year mm-hmm. was really entertaining to watch. And that, you know, that that's, I mean. And that's all fans ask for. I mean, like, look at yep. Michigan State hockey. I did watch the game against Michigan in that horrible third period. But, you know, when you watch the college hockey game, it's obvious to see that these guys aren't in the NHL yet. It's a lot slower. But when it, there's significance slapped on it, when there's interesting, you know, when there's uh, actually good teams, your team's actually good. You watch it no matter what because there's good things about to happen or, you know, or there's competitive stuff. So 
I don't know. Well, let me. I, I just think it's it shouldn't be a crazy thing that women's basketball. I'm, I'm happy for women, women's basketball. And the question is really, you know, is it is this the beginning of something that? And, and it, it might be where this is a real, uh, like ten years from now, will we look at this as the as the well, sort you of need trans, more players transformational Ka- movement? I, I think is there it, another Caitlin Clark there, out there? There will be because it'll be like with Tiger Woods and golf. It'll be it's going to be something where seven, ten years from now, the kids who are pissing their coaches off right now in, in, in um, you know, in, in, in Little League ball, shooting up 29-footers. Everybody wants to be that. Every, people are going to pattern their game after her. They are. It, it is, it, it, and you're going to see a wave of it come up. You, you, you've seen it in other, in, you know, in other sports like that, but it will be, um, I, I think, I think it's, I think she is, uh, and, I, and it's not, the question about whether she's the best ever, she is to me the most influential ever in terms of how I think it's going to change the sport and change interest in the sport. And by the way, you are number, you are second in our Midtown Brewing Company uh, Couch on the Roof 2024 Women's I'm keeping Basketball the Bracket Challenge. You're second. Dylan Gregory at first. You've got UConn. Mm-hmm. So if UConn wins it, you've got this sucker because you're just a point behind Dylan. Uh, Nick Kiefer is uh, two... Two behind you in third with Iowa. Bruce D has South Carolina four. Adrian Lutz it, uh, uh, and uh, J- Jared Joseph both fifth with South Carolina. Um, so, but the interesting we'll, thing we'll see, you know, Graham, when she goes to the WNBA, the Caitlin Clark, that is, of does the momentum with Caitlin Clark leave with her? Does some stay in women's college hoops and then half goes the? You know what I mean? Well, I, I tell you what, it's because I don't, do. I don't know if she should stay for. An, I know she won't. She announced she's leaving. But you know what I mean? Like, would it be beneficial to the women's game if she stayed one more year? Uh, no, I think everybody has their time, and I think this is her time. She had these sort of two years in the real spotlight, and it's time for the, – the, and there are other great young stars who will emerge, and what where she is going to be most valuable is the juice that she has given the women's game will transfer to the WNBA, and I think that is um, that is worth a lot, and that's the next thing. It's it's what Magic and Bird brought to the NBA, you know, when, when they have played the most watched college game ever – and then took went to a league that previously had its finals on tape delay, and increasingly brought you know and, and changed how people saw that league. I mean, Dr. J couldn't do that. Dr. J was in the ABA and NBA, and still nobody was watching that shit, you know. And he was unbelievable. And but when, when Magic and Bird came in, it became this rivalry. It became these characters that people kind of grew up with or grew into. And and I think that is well. In Dr. J's defense, if that happened this year, and you had a Dr. J level player in a league against the NBA, I think it would be a lot different. And there was a lot of great players in the ABA. There just wasn't much coverage of it. Yeah, well, um, if you want to watch the uh, the women's Final Four, the men's Final Four, any of the Tigers games off to this incredible start, Midtown Brewing Company is a great place to do that. Underrated place to catch games. Great place for a date night for any occasion. Great place to just uh, post up at the bar, have an American stout with a friend, and uh, have a chat. And, um, and if you win the Couch in the Rube, uh, 2024 bracket challenges or to finish in the top three part of your gift packages will be include midtown brewing company gift certificates and if you win it all if you win the men's or the women's you get uh, up to a hundred dollars in free food at the back booth with up to six friends at uh, midtown brewing company in and trees will throw Michigan. some things in for the, yes. the winners too it'll be it'll be It'll be cool stuff. And there's a third pool out there, and I'm aware of it. Trust me, you're going to get a prize too. It's the people who signed up for last year's bracket and are in our little thing by themselves. And the winner of that will also get some stuff uh, from Town Brewing Company. And shout out to the people that didn't do it, that just read it and defied it and said, this, this isn't right. Because me, I just was the same way. I just go, hey, I guess I need to fill this out. I started it's hearing here. from people like I'm in the wrong, like I'm in the wrong what is bracket. This what, what if, bracket? I, and, and I got to figure out how to make I mean, that's such a stupid thing. There shouldn't be auto emails from your previous year that go out to people with the wrong bracket. That's just, that's... Uh, it's just fitting uh, for a Couch in the Rube contest. That's, yeah, that's really dumb. Um, speaking of uh, of the Tigers, by the way. Oh, yeah, hold on a second. Buenos tardes. It is time for the Detroit Tigers gambling update with Gramanito Couch and Jason Nee. couple things. One, Pure Options has a cool deal going on with the uh, Detroit Tigers starting, uh, what day is today, the 4th? Yeah. Starting the 5th, right? If the Tigers score seven or four, seven or more runs, 
uh, get a free uh, Pro Grow 8 with a purchase of $40 or more the next day. So we have that d- Couch in the Rube deal, and we'd still appreciate if you let them know Couch in the Rube sent them, or if sent them, sent you, sorry. Um, but the Tigers, there's a Tigers deal. Anytime they score seven or more runs, and that may not happen this season because their uh, their bats seem a little quiet right now. Uh, you get a free Pro Grow 8 with a purchase of 40 or more the next day after the Tigers score seven runs with the promo code Tigers. So when you're there to say Tigers or you know whatever, it, Tigers is the free um, deal. That's a cool deal with, with Pure Options. I was also talking to uh, Christopher over at, at Pure Options today, and I was telling him about our old Tigers bet where we used to have a lot of fun betting on them to lose. Now, you, you can't do that anymore, and I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful that they're competitive. He's a Rockies fan. He said the Rockies are so horrible and so putrid. Like, I, they may be worth that, but that may be our team to jump on this year. That maybe we become bet against the Rockies every day. Mm. And that could be our fun bet against a team bet. Going to have to stay up late for some of those games, though. But yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. maybe not watch, just blindly bet the game. It's, sometimes that's more fun to wake <laughs> up and see the, uh, see the money uh, in, in the account. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Pure Options has a 420 uh, Lansing block party. Uh, coming up on 420, some great deals coming up. Uh, uh, you know, 42 ounce small bud ounces, 64 ounce, uh, 64 dollar Pro Grow top shelf ounces, five for 49 Bam vapes and more. Uh, again, that's 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, on uh, Saturday 420 at the Pure Options location in Frandor, and those specials will start on the 17th uh, as well. There's some cool NFL draft stuff they're going to do at their Detroit location that we'll get into. Um, Later, man, uh, as the well. division the Rockies are in, they're one and six right now, one and six in their last ten. Uh, man, Dodgers, Diamondbacks, Padres, Giants. It, yeah. sounds, it looks good, doesn't it? It, it does. It, it seems like a I think uh, Chris is on to some. It, it, it might be, uh, it might be a, a really, a really smart play. Um, couple other things to get into, uh, that we want to we want to get into today. One, first of all, there's an MSU hockey story out there that I think is. So you watched the hockey uh, this past weekend. You watched I MSU did. play. I did. Yeah. And uh, w- first of all, what was your th- your thought when you knew they were going to have to play Michigan again when they were four and one against Michigan? And you watched that. Did you? Yeah, it's well, it's the old sports kind of adage of you know you can't. It's hard to beat that team a certain amount of times. I mean, how, how many times have they played? Was that the third time they had played the season? Or no, something it was like the tw- sixth. sixth. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just was watching it. As a fan watching a big time event, because if they won that game, obviously, you know, that would have been insanity. But, but I, I, yeah, the third period against Michigan was brutal. Didn't go well. Didn't yeah. go well. Um, but to the point that you know, some of the coverage from myself and Nathaniel Bott at the LSJ out there about just what Michigan State hockey is on its way to becoming, and what a destination place it is supposed to be. Right, because it's kind of like a Lions thing where you see it going, and it kind of happened. They, you know, they exceeded expectations than you, what they thought. Right? They've got so many things going for them. They have a decent NIL situation going on uh, through the This Is Sparta uh, collective. They've got uh, a a situation with a, a brand new, or not brand new, but a renovated arena with some, you know, so their bells and whistles are up to par. They've got a, a, a young coach and staff that people are really into. The program's clearly on the rise. Um, they've got some NHL guys there, and today. Uh, Brad Elliott Schlossman, who covers uh, North Dakota, but also college hockey for the Grand Forks paper, uh, does it real well. Um, Minnesota Wild first-round pick Charlie Strammel has entered the transfer portal, and Michigan State, he reports, is the strong front-runner to pick him up. I mean, this is what's happening now. It, it is momentum. It's a Big Ten campus, which a lot of these schools don't have, so it's a cool campus. It's a program on the rise. And this was always what Michigan State was capable of being for a decade and couldn't get its stuff together. Now, some of that was... Facilities. They couldn't get a new MUN built or then MUN renovated, and then it got delayed by COVID, which sucked for Danton Cole. Um, I don't know that he ever would have been able to bring the program to this, um, but it, it, it just it, it, it's, it's more exciting stuff for, uh, for MSU hockey. Um, and then in the recruiting world, Jason, this is an interesting story. A.J. Storr, the, uh, uh, the Wisconsin basketball player who – hurt Michigan State a couple times so badly this past year, reportedly asked Kansas for a million dollars in NIL, and Kansas countered with 750 k and he said no, and that's apparently that. Um, it is pretty remarkable, the, the figures that are out there right now, 
for, for NIL. Is it going to get higher than Kansas? I mean, Kansas, they have their own kind of, what, NIL space, whatever. But well, yeah. they, do these guys think that there's just endless money in it? I think right now they're testing that. Sure. But to I, turn down 750 Well, I mean. I mean, who else would give him that kind of scratch? I mean. I mean, I, I'm not saying you can't make that at MSU. Um, but but you got to be really good. Here's the thing. Um, I think what's important, though, too, is we stop calling it NIL. Right? Uh-oh. Here comes the tweet. <laughs> Take a drink if you've heard this one. Because it's not name, image, and likeness. It's not. It's not. It's not something that's an endorsement. It's it's salary through a third party, right? So it should be S T T P salary through third party. That's what it is. We're no, no longer nil. Nil is out. I don't want to hear nil unless it's an actual endorsement. Salary through third party. S T T P. That is the new term. We're all in it. It's. I'm not saying I have an issue with nil, right? But. Do you have an issue with store asking for a mill? No, I, you should I, ask ask what you can get. I, I don't think AJ Store is worth that an endorsement certainly, and that's why it's right. it's not it's, it's not real nil. That's why turning down the seven fifty, I kind of have an issue with. He might be worth a million in this warped college sports world we live in, where in a basketball first school like. But Kansas, you would think after they kind of got burned by Dickinson, I mean, what they paid one and a half mil for him. That's the thing. Like the question is, it's going to have to be a basketball first school. Maybe a place like Illinois wants to do it. He's from Illinois. He's from Rockford, uh, Illinois originally. Um, you know, that's why Wisconsin was such a fit. Maybe Indiana. Maybe North Carolina. Maybe these places that it were, or maybe there's an outlier where somebody really wants him. But you know, you got to go to school where the gray hairs and donors find winning worth paying that sort of money without any other return. Right. And I don't. I well, don't. The return is winning a national championship. Correct. Right. But so there's the pressure first round. It's like then the guy that donated a million dollars to get stores, like, well, what the fuck? Yeah. What, what do I get? It's just, yeah. it's, just, it's just we've talked about it before anything and the NIL thing happened or was talked about. It's like, well, what's the structure? What's the rules? And there isn't any. That's what scares me the most is everybody's just like, we've been doing this for a while on the seat of our pants, but we don't have any rules. Right. <laughs> so no, you can't blame store for asking for a mill, but come on. The fact that they countered with 750. I mean that's wild too, but it is wild. It is wild. Um, if you want to uh, watch any of the uh, the NCAA tournament this weekend or Tigers, or whatever, also want to highly recommend uh, Front Forty Three and Cask and Company. Uh, I think you know how we feel about this place. Uh, it was one of the OGs, uh, along with Groovy Donut sponsors for us, and uh, great happy hour specials. By the way, Monday through Friday, three to six p.m. Uh, you got. Uh, 3 to 4 p.m., $3 all draft pours, $1 off draft pours from 4 to 6, uh, $7 select martinis, $7 select house wines, $10 appetizers and flatbread, $2 off specialty sushi rolls, unbelievable menu, good specials, good time to post up at Front 43 Neighborhood Pub and Cask and Company Kitchen Bar just near the Lansing, East Lansing border on East Saginaw uh, in Lansing. Um, one other thing I wanted to announce before, we, one of the story we're going to get to here is we are going to do something a little different with the Groovy Donut Twitter questions as a, as a secondary option for people. I know I keep hearing from people who want to get rid of Twitter, don't use it a lot, and they email, and that's fine. You can keep emailing. They Facebook us questions, whatever it is, and we'll keep doing Twitter questions. You, you can keep tweeting them. That's the way we'll call for them and everything. But we are also going to do something where you can put your Twitter questions in the comments on YouTube under the previous show. So, like, we are going to do a Friday show this week, Groovy Donut Twitter question show, and if you have a Twitter question or, or a question you'd like answered, you can put it in the comments on YouTube on the previous day's show, and or previous show we did, and, and we'll, we'll get them there, and that way you can you don't have to deal, if you, you'd rather live in a world that's free from X or Twitter or whatever it is, you can do so and, and take part in things and still find us easily that way. It's a quick way for me to get them and, and, and compile them and, and, and to interact with you that way, and uh, well, we, what's we the email more. address that you want them to? Is it yours, your personal one, or what's the? You can always send to gram dot couch at gmail dot com. G r a h a m dot couch at gmail dot com. I don't mind giving out my personal email. Um, don't it, my work email? Some people do, but I have like a a fourteen percent reply rate on that email, and some stuff gets sent to like clutter and junk that you know. Sometimes there are people that are like really important. I had a first grade teacher email me, and it went to my junk email, and I didn't see it for like a month and a half. And it was like, oh shit, you know, like that. I was that was that's the sort of person you want to reply to like right away. Were they wondering why they had four LSJ 
subscription? Yes, they were asking. Is that what those are for? Yeah, why you only get 14% of those? She was currently on the phone with somebody in Bangladesh, and she was like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what's, uh, what, what, what's happening uh, here. I actually have a new – I'm going to save it for, for next week's takes. I have a new um, take and proof that Michigan State is a football school. Wow. That I'm going to say for next week's hot takes a little tease. Wow, that is a little tease, tease. Little tease. In a podcast world, that is a tease. Yeah, that's how you do it. Holy shit. Uh, that's, all right, let's get out of here. Okay. Like, we're we'll, teasing that. All right, well, I was going to talk one more story, but we'll, we'll do the other stuff later. Okay. Um, when the, when the, when I, it's like being played off the, the, uh, played off the, uh, the stage at the Oscars, the Oscars yeah. or something. Yeah. Sorry, I thought we were done. No, no. You're, but, if you're teasing that shit a week away. Okay. All right. Well, we appreciate all of you for listening. We, <laughs> it's good to have you back, man. Yeah. We appreciate Pure Options. Go to pureoptions.com for location information. Uh, and, and of course, the 420 block party. Put it on your calendar. The day of the Michigan State spring game. Good reason to double up. Uh, that's going on all day at, at Pure Options. We appreciate Front 43 and Cask and Company. Go, go to caskandcompany.com. Make a reservation. Check out their menu. We appreciate Midtown Brewing Company and uh, for all our March Madness coverage and um, – that's in downtown Lansing. Make sure to check them out as always. We'll be back Friday show. Twitter questions. Good show, man. Yeah, man. Couch on the roof.